make a video on for tomorrow and I look outside and what do you know the one day I drive the Bronco Raptor to work we also have a wild track Sasquatch package sitting right next to it so I figured this was too good of an opportunity to pass up to do a direct comparison and show you guys what the real difference is between these two so to start off with the exterior here with the wild track we've got the 35 inch tires with the 17 inch wheels we do have what looks like a steel bumper in the front and then we've also got these big fender flares Aside from that, this one does have the hard top, which you can see right there, and it's got the rock sliders. Whenever we come around to the back here, you'll also see another steel bumper, and we've got the tail lights, which come on the wild track. And of course, we've got the spare tire right here on the back. Now for the hood and the grill, it's pretty much what we expect with the Broncos in general. We got a gloss black grill with Bronco actually written out. And then for the hood, it's got this little raised section right here. And it's actually got the sticker package where it says Wild Track. Now whenever we look over at the Bronco Raptor, you can tell we've got the 37 inch tires from the factory, the much, much larger fender flares, and a different front bumper. Now not only that, the front grill is different. This is a satin black and it's got the three lights right here in the center. Aside from that, looking at the hood, we've got that awesome and aggressive looking Raptor hood with the heat extractors on top. Also on the fender flares here, they do seem a little bit wider, as you can tell right here. And then we've got the little vent as compared to the fender flares and just the fenders in general on this, they're not quite as bulged as the uh, Bronco Raptor fender flares. So these are wider and then the flares themselves are much, much wider. The headlights for the most part pretty much look the same. It is kind of crazy that it's entirely different front bumper. It looks like it gives us quite a bit more clearance, a better entry angle as you can tell right there. We've also got rock sliders on this one, but the rock sliders are different. You can see right there, versus more of a tubular rock slider. Neither one of these really offer the best protection, but they're both decent. Now for the rear fender, you can tell the actual fender is a wide body. And then we've got this massive fender flare as compared to this flat body. These 35s are absolutely flush with this fender flare setup. They actually tuck in just a little bit. And with this, the 37s also tuck in just a little bit, but it is a much wider overall vehicle. Now for the back, we have a different steel bumper and we obviously have the different tail lights. Not only that, we have the reinforced tailgate back here, then of course the full size 37 inch tire in the back. Now moving beyond that, just to cover some of the basics, the wild track on our left actually has the 2.7 liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost motor with the 10 speed automatic transmission. Whereas the Bronco Raptor has the 3.0 liter EcoBoost motor with the 10 speed automatic transmission. Not a massive power difference to be 100% honest, the Bronco Raptor is right at 420, and I believe the Bronco Wild Track is right at about 350. Now, of course, you can tune the 2.7 to get quite a bit more power out of it, but you can also do the same with the Bronco Raptor. As for the height difference from the factory, both of these machines are pretty much bone stock. You can tell there's a little bit of a height difference. You can tell it a little bit better in person, but the majority of that height difference seems like it's coming from the bigger tire. Of course, a 35 to a 37 will make that vehicle at least an inch taller. And then we've got the awesome Fox suspension on this Bronco Raptor, which is lifting it up just a little bit more. Now for the rest of the exterior, like a lot of the pieces that make the Bronco what it is, like these things on the front of the hood and the mirrors on the side, they are the exact same. The hard top on this looks to be like it is the exact same for both vehicles as well. So they do share a lot of similar features, you know, from the actual body to a lot of the accessory points. But where you really start to notice the difference, at least on the outside, is underneath this vehicle. As you can tell with the Bronco Raptor, it has the Raptor suspension and drivetrain. So the control arms are much, much, much more beefy. We've also got beefed up tie rods. So basically everything to do with your drivetrain is much more beefed up. Aside from that, the track difference is absolutely insane in person. You can tell just how much wider the Bronco Raptor actually is. 
As you can tell, they both have 17 inch wheels, but they are different wheels. This one has a simulated beadlock. Now these are both extremely well equipped, so they've got pretty much all the features that they offer. But let's jump inside this wild track and see what the interior is like compared to the Raptor. So right off the bat here, you can tell there is a two-tone design for the interior here. We've got, oh my gosh, the same display, I guess, that we have in the Raptor, the 12.3 inch screen. And we do have a different uh, layout here for our gauge cluster. So we actually have an analog gauge right here and we have a LCD display in the center. And what do you know, this one actually has power seats in this Bronco. How crazy is that? The one that you pay $95,000 for doesn't come with power seats from the factory standard, but the $60,000 Bronco does. Now in terms of the equipment I am seeing on this, we have the adaptive cruise control. We have all the same functions on the steering wheel, but we are missing the paddle shifters up here and the different mode selections for our steering, for our suspension, our R mode, as well as our exhaust. Aside from that, we've got all the same features down here for our lights. And then for the center, we actually have all the same features here as well, at least from what I can tell. We do have heated seats. We've got a heated steering wheel. And then we've got the selection for our goat modes right here. We've got two high, four high, four low, and four wheel auto, which is the same that we have in the Bronco Raptor. And then whenever you look up top right here, we've actually got our front locker, our rear locker, trail turn assist, and we've also got the traction control off button. One thing I do notice we are missing is gonna be the sway bar disconnect button that is not right here. Aside from that, we've got our garage door openers up top and we've got our auxiliary lights right here. These auxiliary lights don't seem to be plugged up to anything, much like the Raptor, but the Raptor at least does have this one set up for the rigid pods that come in the bumper from the factory. Now for the top, it actually has the same sound deadening material on it, which may help retain some of that heat as well as some of the cool, depending on what temperatures you're driving in. It doesn't have the support beam that goes in the center right here, like the Bronco Raptor, so it is missing that. And then of course for the rear, the back space is going to be the exact same. I do see those speakers on the back of the pillars in the rear on the roll bar, which is really cool to see. I guess that must mean this has the Bang & Olufsen sound system as well. So the exact same sound system that we have in the Bronco Raptor. Now let's go through some of these modes to see what they have. So we've got normal mode, we've got an eco mode, sport, a slippery mode, mud and ruts, sand, and then we also have a Baja mode. Now whenever I put it in Baja mode, just like the Raptor, it turns on the front camera. I didn't even notice that up front. Now you can definitely tell the height difference from the inside. The Bronco Raptor does seem like it's sitting up quite a bit higher if you're just sitting right next to it. But in terms of the view, it is pretty much the exact same. I really do like having this power seat. It just gives you quite a bit more adjustability. Now these seats seem like they are missing quite a bit of bolstering and they're still pretty good. I mean, they're not bad seats at all. And even the passenger side is power adjustable on this wild track model, which is pretty cool. Now I've already driven this around a little bit today to form some sort of an opinion on it. And I've got to be honest with you guys, the 2.7 honestly has plenty of power. I thought that the 2.7 was going to be completely underwhelming because the 3.0 in the Bronco Raptor just really isn't that impressive. It's not that crazy, especially compared to the Rubicon 392. But the 2.7 liter feels pretty similar. It doesn't lack power at all, and it honestly seems like it may get onto the boost just a hair quicker, which is strange, but I believe it's the truth. Now the suspension in this definitely does feel quite a bit different. I haven't got to test it off-road, so I can't speak to its off-road capabilities, but I'm sure it does great, but the suspension is not as soft or forgiving as the Raptor suspension. You can also feel quite a bit of a difference in the actual track width. Just in terms of comparing its stability on the road, the track width makes a big, big difference. Going around curves, whatever the case may be, the Bronco Raptor does feel a little bit more top heavy, but to be honest, the track width really makes up for it. So the driving characteristics are extremely similar, but I've got to say the Bronco Raptor handles the bumps, divots, and potholes much better. So I can only imagine off-road, it is a massive difference. 
Like I said, the 2.7 is no slouch, and I've honestly got to say that I was super surprised by the 2.7's capabilities. I did not think that the power would be so close in terms of how it actually feels. Of course, that 10 speed is the same 10 speed that we use in the Bronco Raptor. And to be honest, it's a really good transmission. It always puts you into the power band. So whenever you step on it, you're definitely gonna go. Now, if you're just gonna be driving one of these vehicles day to day, and you're not gonna be really testing the off-road capabilities or taking it to its limits, I don't really understand why anybody would buy the Bronco Raptor. This has pretty much all of the creature comforts on the inside. It's got a lot of the capabilities. I mean, most of the people that buy the Bronco Raptor, at least 99% of people that buy the Bronco Raptor are not gonna take it to its limits in terms of its off-road capabilities. And I would go as far as to say that 99% of the people that buy the Bronco Raptor wouldn't even take this as far to reach its off-road capabilities. So for the most part, this is probably the better choice, especially once you start to factor in the price. But as everyone knows, there is just something cool about the Bronco Raptor. Now moving on to the Bronco Raptor, it is a different machine. As you can tell, we've got the amber lights that are gonna turn on right there instead of the standard LED lights. We've also got the three lights in the middle and the amber marker lights on the mirrors right there. And of course, you can definitely hear that exhaust quite a bit more. Then from the inside, you start seeing some of the Raptor features. You've got Ford Performance on the door sill, which they're charging us a lot for, and we've got our carbon fiber package on this one. Aside from that, we've got our vinyl seats, which these are all waterproof, and manual adjustments right there. Now carrying on to the rest of the interior, you can tell that the dash is actually different. We've got a little bit of leather stitching up here with not necessarily a soft touch material. This is still like a plastic, but it's covered in something. Aside from that, we do have a completely different wheel. I can tell by just grabbing it, it is a different steering wheel. Then you'll see we have the carbon fiber accents here, and then the different mode selections for our steering, our R mode, our suspension, as well as the exhaust. And then we've got our full paddle shifters here on the back, but they are mounted to the steering wheel and not to the column. You'll also see this full LCD display with no analog gauges. And then you'll be able to see the same 12.3 inch screen we just saw in the last one. Now looking down here, if you guys see any different features for climate control or the media system, let me know, but I honestly don't notice a difference there. The screen is really, really nice in this vehicle and I've been super impressed by its actual quality and capabilities so far. And I'm sure it's the same in the Wild Track Edition. Now looking up here, like I already mentioned, we do have the sway bar disconnect, which we were missing in the other one. And then up here, it's literally the exact same, except our auxiliary number one switch is already wired up for our rigid pod lights. Right here is this extra bar I was telling you guys about before. That is to help with a little bit more rigidity in the Bronco Raptor, just because of the situations they know people are gonna put these through. We've got the same sound system stuff in the back. The roll bar is actually the same, it's color matched on both. And then as you can tell, these seats just do offer quite a bit more bolstering, which is nice. I really do like these seats, but for the most part, everything else is the same. On that one, it seemed like it had a blue color scheme on the interior, and on this, it's like that code orange or red, whatever color it is for the Raptor. So there's really not much difference. Whenever you look down at our different selections for the GOAT mode, obviously we've got two wheel high, four wheel auto, four wheel low, and four wheel high, just like we did in the wild track. And then whenever you're switching through these, we've actually got normal mode, we've got sport, but it does change the exhaust modes. You can see that and the steering changing here on the bottom. And then we've got a tow mode right here for tow haul. And then we've also got a slippery mode and that does shift into four wheel drive. Aside from that, after normal, we've got our off-road mode right here, which is gonna put the exhaust in sport mode and the suspension in Baja and the steering in Baja. And then whenever we actually go to Baja, the only difference is it puts the uh, exhaust in Baja as well, and it throws up that front camera just like the other one did. And then you've got Rock Crawl, which is gonna shift it into four wheel low. Now the modes seem to be extremely similar. I do really like in the Bronco Raptor where you can just press the R button, it pops up your saved modes, and then it'll put it in that mode. 
Also with the exhaust, anytime you have it in Baja, it'll leave this up here that says off-road use only, but you can use it at any speed at any time. One thing I really like about the Bronco Raptor that that was definitely lacking, at least from the factory, is the exhaust. This engine does sound quite a bit better. The 3.0 has just a little bit more displacement and with the exhaust system they have on this from the factory, it's just a bit more pleasant. But to be honest, any of these V6s, these twin turbo V6s are not gonna be great. The Wild Track also has the 360 camera. So it literally has all the same features aside from this screen. And of course, some of the features on the steering wheel being different just because we got paddle shifters, modes, and a different steering wheel itself um but other than that pretty much everything is going to be the exact same and i've got to say i'm pretty surprised by that now just jumping back into this bronco raptor after driving the wild track for some time the power is noticeably different you do have more power in the bronco raptor and you can even tell that just by using your butt dyno but you really have to get on to the but you really have to get onto it to feel that difference. If you're just driving around like normal, you're not gonna feel that much of a difference. The exhaust note, the suspension, the way everything reacts in this does make it a much more enjoyable experience. And to be honest, the suspension in the normal Bronco and this really isn't even comparable. Of course, it still has the independent front suspension, which is gonna typically give you a better ride than what we're used to in the Jeep Wranglers and stuff but it still does not compare to this live valve dampening suspension, the Fox suspension in the Bronco Raptor. It's really just a step above anything else I've tested out in the past. And for whatever reason, whenever you're driving the Bronco Raptor, it really does give you that king of the road kind of feel. And to be honest, I didn't get that out of the standard wild track. For some reason, it just does not feel as cool as this. Now the exhaust, like I've mentioned, does sound better, but they just don't sound great. I've seen many different exhaust setups for these and none of them have really just piqued enough interest for me to actually grab one. Now the way these are set up, I honestly do think these are better daily drivers than a standard Jeep Wrangler or Rubicon, whatever the case may be, just because of the ride quality and the driving characteristics on the street. I don't think they are as capable or honestly as cool as what the Jeeps have to offer, but for the most part, they're pretty hard to beat on the street. So just comparing the exterior, there is an obvious difference between the two. This does have a lot more of those aggressive body lines, the wider fenders, the wider fender flares, and you can see a lot more of the suspension components in the bottom, partly due to the different style bumper with more clearance, but also because the components are just so much more robust. As you can tell on this, for the Bronco Raptor, everything is just massive. You can see those awesome Fox shocks in there as well with that massive lower control arm. And then even up to the upper control arm, everything is just a much beefier design. Whenever you come over and look at the wild track, it's just a smaller version of that that's not as wide. You still have the cool Fox shocks, but are, they are not the live valve dampening, and the control arms top and bottom are just considerably smaller. Then you can tell the size of the axle, the actual width of it, you can see the full axle right there, as compared to the Bronco Raptor's axle right there. It's just a completely different setup, and this is much more robust. As for the bumpers, something cool I think that they added on the normal Bronco is the D-rings from the factory, whereas on the Bronco Raptor, they have the hooks for D-rings and it probably is a more solid mount straight into the frame, but you don't have D-rings. They could have just added the D-rings. I mean, come on. Moving to the back here, obviously you'll be able to see the Fox suspension with the Bronco Raptor. Still has a little bit of mud on it, as compared to the suspension for the wild track, just a completely different setup. This is what the rear axle looks like on the normal Bronco or the wild track. And then this is the rear axle and the suspension setup for the Bronco Raptor. Now it is extremely cold out here, so let's go inside and we'll go over the technical specs and compare window stickers between both of them. So now that I've had a chance to get back inside and warm up, I have both window stickers printed out 
And to be fair, before we even get started, both of these are 2023s. This is the Bronco Wild Track, and then this is the 2023 Bronco Raptor. Now, to start off, both of these are the four-door Advance 4x4. I don't know what difference that makes. You can see this one is the 2.7 EcoBoost with the 10-speed automatic, and this is the 3.0 liter EcoBoost with the 10-speed automatic. Now, I do think that this window sticker or this uh, 2023 Wild Track was made before the price increase. For those of you that don't know, Ford basically, just like a lot of the other manufacturers, raised their MSRP or their base MSRP by around $10,000. So a vehicle like this that may have been 63 is probably now 73, whereas my Bronco Raptor was actually made after the price increase. So what could have been maybe an $84,000 vehicle ended up being a $94,000 MSRP vehicle. So for the exterior, there are a few differences in terms of what comes you know, standard. For the interior, pretty much everything's the same except for the stuff that we've talked about. For the functional stuff, most of it's the same, but we do have all of the Raptor equipment that's listed here. Both the Bronco Raptor and Wild Track share the 4.7 gears with the front and rear locker or the safety and security. Pretty sure all that's the same. And whenever we move on to the price, you guys will see the equipment that's added onto this. So there are a few things that were added, nothing too awful crazy. And you'll see the base price there was at 54,320 and the total options were 7,000, taking the price to 61 before destination charge taking it to a total MSRP of 63030. Now for the Bronco Raptor, there are a few extra things added on top of the Raptor package. Lux package, adaptive cruise control, heated steering wheel, wireless charging pad, the Raptor graphic, the interior carbon fiber pack, the keyless entry pad. So the base MSRP whenever I purchased this was 86580, $5,960 in options. 92,540 plus the destination charge, which brings us to a total price and MSRP of 94,435. Now to be 100% honest with you guys, that is a massive, massive difference for, I hate to say it, but not $30,000 worth of extra equipment. I don't see the $30,000 increase in here. So to be 100% honest, unless you are just going after the Raptor to get the baddest and the most capable off-road machine that Ford makes for the Bronco, it doesn't really make sense. There are people that are going to buy it just because they prefer the looks. And, you know, to be honest, I understand that. But for the price difference, if you're looking to actually use the vehicle, take it off-road sometimes, but drive it on the street more times than not. I think the Wild Track with the Sasquatch package is really the one to go with. I've been more than happy and impressed with my Bronco Raptor, but to see just how much it costs, it's really hard to justify, especially whenever you can get a lot of the same things for a substantially lower price. And to see the difference in price is just crazy. Now, now to give you a point of perspective, we are selling this vehicle with 9,000 miles on it for $60,000. So the price hasn't really dropped much. It didn't lose much value. If the prices did go up to $70,000 for the same vehicle, the prices have dropped a lot. So where mine was definitely made after the price increase, and I'm not sure if this one was made after the price increase or not, you can tell there's a big difference. I think if the Bronco Raptor was only 84 and this was say 64, that wouldn't be as, that wouldn't be as substantial of a difference. You know, you're saving about 10 grand between the difference that we're seeing right here. But between this difference, it would only make sense to go with the Bronco Wild Track. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that kind of comparison. If there are some things that I missed, be sure to drop that down in the comments below. If you guys want to see more comparison videos like this, be sure to let me know. Obviously, I've got the Rubicon 392 at home that we've already done some comparisons on in terms of its off-road and on-road capabilities. But if you want to see a direct comparison just like this with the Rubicon 392, be sure to leave it down in the comments. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see next. But till then, Godspeed.